It's Techtober, guys, and you know what that means? That means it's finally time for some new MacBook Pros. Oh, can we please, please get some new MacBook Pros right now? Okay, folks, it's October, and that's a good thing because, you know, we got September, we got the event, we got the iPhones, we got a new iPad Mini, it's very cute. We got a new iPad Regular, it's not as cute, but it's good. You know, we got some new products coming, but now that it's October, you and I can get can get really excited because we both know what we're what we're really waiting for this year. It wasn't the iPad Mini, it wasn't the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro. It's these gosh dang MacBooks. And I mean, we're talking about weeks here, not months or just, you know, sort of a question mark up in the air. So today we're gonna to talk about everything that we're expecting, plus some new bits of news that have come out in the past like 48 hours. Let's get into this. So first up, we gotta talk about the Apple Watch Series 7. Uh, boring, nobody cares about that thing, it's not any different, is what you might be thinking, but I promise that this is related to MacBooks, somehow. So basically, we've got a whole bunch of sources saying, hey guys, guess what? The Apple Watch Series 7 is coming out mid-October, and that's a, a lot sooner than we thought, because when Apple unveiled the Series 7 just a couple of weeks ago, they basically said, hey, here's a new Apple Watch and eventually you can buy it. They didn't give any specific dates. But now we're here in mid-October. Now that's interesting. However, the reason why this relates to MacBooks is it would make sense if Apple does have another event this month that they would sync up, you know, saying, hey, the watch is available now, uh, or at the very least having it go on sale at a similar time to the MacBooks that we're also expecting. And so now we're starting to see people pointing around saying, hey, look at this folks. Mid-October seems like a pretty interesting time frame." Another little breadcrumb that might point us to a mid-October event date is that the back to school sale ends on October 11th, which is a Monday. Now that's interesting because last year the back to school event ended on October 12th, which was a Monday and then we had an October 13th Apple event. So it stands to reason that this year on Tuesday, October 12th, which is really, really soon, there could potentially be a repeat of that. And that means that we could be getting event invites as soon as Tuesday. Folks, this is really, really exciting. I would definitely be keeping your eyes peeled every Tuesday because Basically, so keep your eyes peeled this Tuesday, the one after it, and the one after that. Those are the three potential dates that we could get event invites if there is going to be an event this month. Now, personally, I'm a little bit skeptical of this because it's only been like two and a half weeks since the September event, and it's only been one week since the Apple products actually dropped. So it seems like giving it an extra one or two weeks just to let, you know, iPhone 13, iPad mini, and the new base model iPad, just to let those products sink in a little bit before coming to this new event. But I have to say, the evidence is there. It's not like people are pulling this date out of thin air. So personally, I think October 12th is gonna be a big day because it's either going to be event day, or if it isn't, it's probably gonna be event invite day with the event coming the following week on the 20th. No, sorry, the 19th, that's a Tuesday. Now the biggest new thing that I'm really excited about for this video came from Steve Moser. He's a Mac Rumors contributor, I've talked to him a bunch, and he basically just sits down and he just absolutely pours through system information data that's found in macOS betas. And the most interesting thing that he just found a couple of days ago was the resolutions for the displays on the upcoming 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now this is really big. So here are the display resolutions. There's two. The smaller one is 3021 by 1964. The larger one is 3456 by 2234. Now those numbers might not mean a whole lot on their face. Basically, they're just a little bit more pixely than what we currently have. So the current 16 inch MacBook Pro is 3270 by 1920, which was itself an increase over the 15.4 inch MacBook Pros that came before it with a resolution of 2880 by 1800. But what's interesting this time is that even though we have an increase in display resolution, we're not expecting an increase in the overall display size. It's still expected to be 16 inches. 
So that leaves us with a couple of options. Number one is that these new MacBook Pros, which are expected to have mini LED displays, could have a higher pixel density. And number two is that the displays could be getting larger. So even though it might be called a 16 inch, it could be 16.4 inches. You know, the previous 15 inch MacBook Pro is actually 15.4 inches. So it stands to reason that the, the display itself could get physically larger, slightly. Personally, I don't think that the screens are gonna be getting that much larger. So at 16 inches exactly, the new resolution would be 257 pixels per inch, which is an increase over the 226 that we currently have. But if the new resolution was also going to be at 220 pixels per inch, then the MacBook Pro would have an 18 inch diagonal screen. I don't think that's gonna happen. So I think that it's a pretty fair bet that the pixel density is going to increase but the screen size will probably stay about the same, maybe within a few tenths of an inch, like 16.2 inches or something like that. One thing that is really interesting is the aspect ratio. The entire time that the MacBook Pro has existed, it has had a 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the display. But both of these new resolutions are 14 by nine, which is taller. And that's actually really interesting because if you look at the bezels of both the 13 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros right now, they're thicker on the top and bottom where the MacBook Pro label is than they are on the sides. So if Apple is going to be reducing the bezel size and going to an iPad Pro style design language, then we would expect the bezels on the top and therefore the bottom to be similarly thin as the sides. And that would mean making the display a little bit taller. Now this is honestly really great news because I'm a big fan of tall aspect ratios. They give you a lot of room when reading documents, typing documents. It's also great for Final Cut Pro because it means I can see more of my timeline and the things that I have stacked on top of my footage. So I'm here for it. 14 by nine, I think is a pretty good aspect ratio. It's not quite the same as an iPad, iPads are a very tall aspect ratio. Now curiously for the smaller MacBook Pro, if we take the pixel density of 257, then that would make the smaller resolution, which was of course 3021 by 1964, exactly 14 inches. They have the same pixel density. So that's why I think it's unlikely the screens are actually gonna get larger because 16 inch exactly, 14 inch exactly, both have the same pixel density. That is really interesting. Now I suppose that could be, you know, 14.2 and 16.2, but they're exactly two inches apart and maintaining the same pixel density, which means, I mean, basically 14 inch MacBook Pro confirmed because this is never really something that has officially been stated, right? You go back and you've heard lots of people talking about a new 14 inch MacBook Pro, but it's been, sort of an assumption rather than something with actual evidence. But now we got the evidence, folks. Here it is. The 14 inch MacBook Pro will be at minimum 14 inches. I, I personally had been kind of afraid that they were basically gonna keep it exactly the same, but just increase the display like a tiny, tiny bit from 13.3 to like 13.5, and then just like round it up to 14 or something like that. But this is actually a pretty substantive increase, right? Going from 13.3 to 14 inches is a difference of 0.7. That's actually a bigger difference than it was going from the 15 to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, because that was only 0.6 of an inch. And having both of those laptops, I can tell you that it makes a pretty big difference. And having 0.7 more of an inch of screen real estate makes an even bigger difference on a smaller display. So I think the 14 inch MacBook Pro is shaping up to be a really, really viable option. And I think a lot of people are gonna go for it, especially compounded with the fact that we're expecting it to have the same internals more or less as the 16 inch. Earlier this year, people had sort of been wondering, okay, are they gonna put the same processor in the 14 inch and the 16 inch? Most likely, but are they going to be sort of clocked the same? The 16 inch is obviously going to have larger fans and larger batteries, so maybe it'll get some more juice. Well, reliable leaker Dylan DKT was basically saying, hey, I think it's gonna be exactly the same, the same processor in both of these. No difference in clocks, nothing like the MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air versus the M1 MacBook Pro. 
So that's really encouraging because it means that if you want the most performance, you don't have to get the biggest, heaviest, most expensive MacBook there is. And I think a lot of people are going to be flocking to the 14 inch if it is in fact the same internals with a display of you know 257 PPI, 14 by nine aspect ratio. And then of course, we know pretty much for a fact, and I can tell you that I'm 100% confident that we will have HDMI, we will have a UHS-2 SD card reader, and the little tidbit that I reported on back in July, a backlit Touch ID sensor. Goodbye OLED touch bar, goodbye dongles. You know, this, this is huge. The MacBook Pro is looking like it's basically just Apple saw our wish list, right? And they're like, hey guys, it's Christmas, you get all of that stuff. Actually, not all of that, because I just forgot about upgradability and repairability. My goodness, I would be thrilled if Apple makes any attempt to bring back repairability or upgradability with any of their Apple products going forward. But for now, these new MacBook Pros that we could be seeing in two weeks, guys, two weeks, that, that, that's pretty incre incredible. And, and they look like they're gonna be really exciting. So let me know in the comments below what you're most excited for at this event and also when you think it's gonna be. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video.